Oh, I can. Hi. Oh, can you hear me okay? I can, yes. I'm just going to oh. pause this for one second. For some reason, um, it did start to record, which it shouldn't be doing it. Hold on one second. Can you see me, Lisa? It's Caroline. I can hear you, but not see you. Let me just That's okay. Maybe, of... maybe you don't need to see me. <laughs> I don't know if they set it up like that. Yeah. You can choose to show how this is Gabby. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Gabby. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thanks, both of you, for joining us. Thank you. Um, so as you can see, I have the PowerPoint up on my screen. I'm not sure who's going to be controlling it, but I will basically hand my mouse over to you um, after I introduce you. So um, we can test that now. Who will be actually clicking through the, the PowerPoint? Um, I'll be doing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me just hand that over to you now so we can try to see if you can um, click right through. Nope, hold on one second. Give it a try now. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, it seems to be going through perfect. Awesome. Okay. Um, so that is great. So I'll just do a little introduction um, right at 12 and just tell folks we'll probably get started in another minute or two. Um, and then I'll hand it over to you. And then you should be able to see all the questions in the question section. Do you guys see that on the right hand side? Questions, yep. Perfect. Okay. Now, is that different than chat? So we can get a question. So, but can, can we use either the chat or question? Um, so, chat will send, send information to whatever audience you choose. Unfortunately, our viewers do not have chat, so they won't be able to see that. Okay. They won't be able to send okay. us any through chat. They will just be sending their questions to the question section. Sure, sure. Okay, so we can just say, um, we say, oh, you know, um, throw in your response in the chat box, but we'll just say in the question area for- Yeah, exactly, the perfect. And I'll mention it too, okay. um, right at the start. And that will be on everyone's right side of their screen too? Yes. Okay, great. I've just never used this one. This is cool. <laughs> Yeah, this is um, so, great for a larger yeah. audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, Caroline, so the benefit of the chat box is if generally on the, when I said it on the webinar, only Caroline can see it and the person writing it. Um, so that if somebody wrote something not really appropriate, she can kind of whittle through those, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. So, so you can actually, you'll see once we get going with the question section. Um, Caroline, you should be able to see the option to send a response to everyone or just that individual. Um, and how we've been doing it um, with other presentations is that you know the presenter would just read off the questions that are more public facing and answer those um, live. Okay. Will every will the audience be able to see the questions too, or just me? Just you. So um, so when if you are answering one live, um, it is good to just read it back because they cannot see the questions that are coming yeah. through. Perfect. Oh, that's okay. So we'll just use just the question box for both the chat responses and any other additional questions that somebody has. Yeah, so the chat is good for if you want to say something to the presenters or if you want to send some some good resource or a link or or some sort of general information piece, you can send that to everyone through the chat so everyone can see it. But again, the question section just comes to us. Okay. Um, okay. Sound good. Yeah, I do like to mute myself while Lisa's talking just in case like I take a sip of water. I, I don't want there to be any Absolutely. background. Noise. I will so be I doing the same thing. <laughs> I mute myself also because my puppy gets mad at any time someone delivers something to my door. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> do I just click the little green uh, microphone or how do I mute myself? Yep, the microphone. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, awesome. Perfect. So Caroline, how should I introduce you? Um, should I just say a colleague or? Um, what you can say, what do you think, Lisa, just the moderator? Or... Um, if you say, and now what, we'll turn it over, um, because usually Caroline says she does the intro. Do you know what I mean? So she'll say, okay. hi, I'm Caroline. Okay, so, um, and, and you could just say, and now we'll begin. And then Caroline can introduce herself from there. Perfect. That makes okay, good. Good. Now, what time will you open it up for attendees? Um, so I believe for some reason when you joined in on the phone, it started our recording. So I believe now at this point, anybody can log in, but it is still a little early, so. Okay, on my screen it says in practice mode, start. Should I hit that for any reason or no? It says in practice mode and there's an orange start buzz button. Okay, um, hold on one second. I'm gonna log out and log back in. Um, I think something weird happened on my end. So hold on one second, I'll be right back. Okay, no So Caroline, you still there? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Um, I went and I had my computer fixed the other day. Yep. Um, it took like three hours. It was supposed to be an hour, but it was so long. And this was one of the things. Remember I told you that on GoToWebinar, my audio doesn't work for some reason? Right. Into it, but apparently I said, oh, let's hope it works on Friday. But I don't know what it is with this particular application. So are you on the phone call in right now? Okay. Oh, yeah, which is okay. not ideal. I have a microphone and a lavalier thing coming. Um, oh, right. Here. But it's the one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. So I'm just started. I have two new webinars ready to go for camp. Um, okay. So I'll. And you post it as I start to get those up and running. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So, really don't know what's going. I think it's recording. So I. All right. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Hi everyone. I see a few people joining in here. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm Gabby, Debt Foundation's Marketing Communications Director. Today we're welcoming Lisa Drennan of Merge Diverse Abilities Inclusion Consulting to our virtual workshop series. Lisa and her colleague, also our moderator, Caroline, will be sharing some strategies for staying socially connected. We're just gonna give folks a few more minutes here to sign on and then I will hand the reins over. Hi everyone and welcome. If you, um, while we're waiting a moment, if you want to take a moment and get your your question box all working, because we're going to be using that today. If you can see your question area, um, put in your name and where you're from, so we can say hello while we're waiting to begin. Great. Now, Caroline, are you able to see those? Uh, yep, I got one. Hi, Lisa. Caitlin from Jet Foundation. We have Jessica from New Orleans. Hi, Jessica. And Lee from Southern California. Good morning, I think, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. Good morning, Lee. Some new people have just joined on. So if you want to take a moment, get your uh, question box going, making sure that's working properly, you know where it is, you can go ahead and type in your name and where you're from so we can say hello to you. We'll be starting in just a moment.
All right, I think we're just about ready to start. Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who are just signing on, my name is Gabby. I'm Jet Foundation's Marketing Communications Director. Today, as part of our as part of our virtual workshop series, we are joined by Lisa Drennan and her colleague Caroline of Merge Diverse Abilities Inclusion Consulting. Lisa will be sharing her presentation and answering any and all questions. So please use the questions section throughout to share any thoughts or questions. Um, and with that, I will pass it over to Caroline. Thanks, Gabby. Um, I'd like to say welcome to everyone. I'm Caroline Claflin. I'm with Merge Diverse Abilities Inclusion Consulting, and I'm happy to serve as your moderator for today's webinar. Top 10 Coping Strategies to Stay Socially Connected, which is part of the Inclusion is Not Cancelled series from Merge. Thank you for joining us. Before we, be before we begin, I'd like to go over a few logistical items. Today's webinar will run for approximately 50 minutes, leaving time at the end for questions. Everyone is muted except for myself and our presenter, Lisa Drennan. There are times during the presentation where your participation is encouraged by providing your ideas and suggestions via the question. There will be questions asked of the audience at specific times during the presentation. You can also use the question box to share any other questions you may have for Lisa. So let's start. I'd like to introduce to you our presenter for today, Lisa Drennan, founder of Merge Diverse Abilities Inclusion Consulting. Lisa has a 35 year career supporting individuals with disabilities to be active and engaged within their community. Starting as a direct support professional at New England Village in Pembroke, Massachusetts, a residential community for adults with developmental disabilities, she climbed the ranks and expanded her experience to be named the director of the Solar Wellness Center, a first of its kind building offering aquatics, fitness, music, art, and education specifically designed to meet the needs of persons with developmental and physical disabilities. In 2014, she joined the South Shore YMCA as the first ever Association Director of Inclusion, creating innovative programs and comprehensive staff trainings to build a culture of inclusion. In 2018, Lisa started Merge, where she provides consultations, staff training, and system implementation to community entities committed to recreation, sport, and social program inclusion. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Lisa. Great, thank you. Um, I see in the chat box that there was some feedback. I'm hoping now, maybe Caroline, if you meet yourself, that might be um, resolved. So please let us know if that is resolved. And welcome everybody. I'm so glad to be with you here today. And we'll get started right away. So um, we have 50 minutes and we have a lot to go through. We're going to start with welcome and introductions and then setting the stage. So who's on the call? Why are you on the call today? Or why is this important topic? And then how we're going to implement the strategies that are shared here today. All right. Then we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of today's webinar, Top 10 Inclusion Tips. We'll wrap it up with an attitude of gratitude and positivity and then resources shared. Let's get started. All right, as Caroline mentioned, she went through my history. I have 35 years experience working with persons with developmental, intellectual, physical disabilities. Um, and what I'd like to share in, in this piece or in this slide is that um, for the first, say, 30 years of my career, I had worked with, in a group hall, in a um, residential setting where everyone who I worked with had the job or responsibility to be supporting the men and women that we supported. So my interest is always in recreation and enrichment, and that's where I really found that a person could find their passion, their gifts, and, and feel like they belonged or were valued within the group or the community. When I moved over to the South Shore YMCA, what became immediately apparent was that the um, staff of the YMCA, so it, it could be a camp counselor or a membership staff, maybe it was a Zumba instructor or whatnot, that in order to be inclusive and run programming where they would welcome persons with diverse abilities, I'll get into that term in a moment, um, that they needed some strategies and help and, and they didn't have that background. So it became apparent that until we really work with the rest of the community, authentic inclusion of persons with any type of um, diverse ability is going to be a challenge. So that's why I started Merge. I work with recreation, sport, camp, any community organization that provides something for the general population, and I teach them how to be more inclusive in their practices. So let's get started. I use that term diverse ability. So what does that mean? So what it means to me 
is that people interact, they learn, they participate in different ways. And it can be impacted by where if they have a physical disability, learning disability, perhaps a psychiatric dis or neurological disorder, autism spectrum disorder, perhaps invisible or hidden disabilities, intellectual or developmental disabilities. So if you take all those different ways that a person can interact, learn, and experience in the world around them, that's why I use the term diverse abilities. Because to me, it just says that if you, we have a group in front of us and we're offering something, that we should be mindful that people may be coming from all different um, you know, places of how they would participate. So that's um, my term diverse abilities. And then the second chart of my, um, second half of my, Companies may merge diverse abilities, inclusion, and selfies. What does inclusion mean to me? So I just like to be clear with my audience that inclusion is when an organization, an entity, a group, whatnot, that there is intentional planning for the success of all. So I work to try to teach not um, as much specialized or adaptive programs. Um, that can be part of what inclusion looks like, but I work to really push those boundaries uh, for an organization to think about how they can include in anyone with any type of diverse ability. So just like to clear that up and get that, um, you know, us off to the right start and on the right page. All right, so speaking of that, setting the stage. Who's on this call today? And I want to thank you, first of all, for being on this call. So you may be here as a parent or you're a friend, you're a family member, I'm assuming, an employee or a community member. But you also may be on this call as you, as a person, right, who may also benefit from these strategies. So we're going to keep that in mind throughout the um, presentation. And then who else should be on this call? Really anyone, because inclusion means all now more than ever. And what I'm sharing are strategies or ways of thinking um, in this current situation that can be applicable at any time, which we'll talk about in a moment now. So why are we spending time learning about inclusion strategies and why now? And the number one reason is they are good for all and not just persons with diverse abilities or their family members. It's good for everyone to understand um, the strategies that we're going to be going over. And when I first was asked to um, create this this presentation, I had been um, I had a series of trainings for the Massachusetts Library Association, and they were to start in March and April, and that didn't happen, of course. So what had happened is they asked me, "Can you take what you learn and make it applicable to now? Because now everybody's at home and they're um, you know they're struggling with isolation and and whatnot." So that's how this came about. And it really is important, and now more than ever, inclusion strategies are good for all. And they help us to address loneliness, fear, depression, anxiety, and isolation. So we're going to talk a little bit more about um, loneliness in a bit. And these strategies that we're going to discuss together today will be applicable now and in the future. So setting the stage, so how? How are we going to take what we're learning today and, and apply that in our life? So um, what I want to challenge you to do is think back to the last slide and who was on this call, right, the two slides ago. You may be sitting there as a parent or maybe thinking about your role in, um, you know, your position or your role as an employee, a community member, a friend, whatnot, or a person with a diverse ability, self-advocate, whatnot. So no matter what lens you're looking through, um, I want to ask you, as we go through each strategy, you may initially say, well, that isn't really for me, but let's think, in your different roles, does it make sense, or can you help someone else to learn about the strategy that could be helpful for them? So that's how we're going to use it. And then um, the second thing I want to ask us to do is the you know, most common term that everybody's using is, you know, we need to socially distance. Well, I really want to challenge that. I don't want us to socially distance. I want us to physically distance to be um, safe, but I want to take that word social back. It's so important now more than ever that we consider how we can continue to socially connect during while we are physically um, distancing. Okay. And that we realize that we all have a responsibility to all members of our community, right? So that, and this is a good time to be thinking about that, is that, you know, this entire planet is going through this pandemic right now, and maybe it is a good time for us to think about how we all can help everyone to succeed and successfully get through this and navigate the challenges that we have. 
in front of us. So with that being said, I'm going to start with my top 10 strategies. And this is a really good point for me to um, share with you that, um, number one, I'm happy to sh um, share the slide deck with anybody who can just send me an email. Um, but if you want to take a screenshot or whatnot, go to it, right? So anything that you find of interest here that you'd like to, um, I welcome you to do that. And number two, as I go through these strategies, um, I would like to ask you to have an understanding that any suggestions that either I provide or somebody within the audience does, that it's done within the CDC guidelines, right, safely. So we keep that in mind. So coping strategies for all during a time of isolation and uncertainty. Let's get going. All right. So number one, getting in the right mindset. So um, in, in this place, it's a great place for us to start this webinar and really, you know, get into um, the strategies here. So it's a reminder for us all to be thinking about our mindset as we approach situations. Now our mindset for ourselves, so how we can help others as well. So we'll start with, you know, I'm stuck at home or, you know, it's summertime and we're, we're all stuck at home. So instead of saying I'm stuck at home, maybe we switch the word and say I'm safe at home and get to spend more time with my family. Okay. Um, you can see other examples there, but I'm going to go down some and go down to there is too much uncertainty right now. Absolutely. Particularly, you know, um, happening now and in the past couple of weeks. And so getting in the right mindset might look like, while I can't control the situation around me, I can control my actions. We're going to take a moment um, in a couple of slides to talk about what we can and cannot control. All right, coping strategy number one, the next part of this getting in the right mindset. I think it's important that we take a moment to recognize that over the last few months, we've all experienced some type of loss or grieving, or we may have. Right? So whether that's special occasions or canceled vacations, um, however it is that you've, what you've lost, I think it's a great time for you to share that with us. So I'm going to share, but while I am sharing, I want you to think about what have you lost or what are you grieving that, um, since this pandemic started? And I'm going to ask you to go ahead into the chat box and go ahead and type away something that you'd like to share with the group here. So um, for me, I really miss working out at the, my local YMCA. Uh, it was something that I really enjoyed and seeing my um, colleagues and friends there. And it was um, something that I really missed, having that, that atmosphere. I did have a trip um, to Italy then to celebrate my 30th anniversary in April. And of course, that didn't happen. So um, there are things that I'm, I just, you know, I felt like were lost or that I'm missing right now. So what are you missing and what would you like to share with the group right now? Go ahead and if you can open um, your um, slide, if you can open on your um, question box there, you can type right into it. What are you missing or what, you know, what are you looking for to get back or what, what are you grieving right now or missing? So go ahead and Caroline, if you'd like to share what comes up. Um. We have my job and my coworkers. Yeah. Um, my son's clinical trial was canceled. Okay. Um, going to the gym, like you, Lise. Yep, yep, yep. I see taking my grands out and about. Yep, that's um. Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, Caroline, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a little toggle area on the um, question that you can um, go up and down and, and catch ones that we might have missed. Okay. Um, okay. Right. I see things like going to the movies and mall. Yeah, I missed that too. Anything else? Anything else that you see, Caroline? Uh, yep. Yeah. I was supposed to go on a trip with my husband and friends to Jamaica for the 40th birthday and other trips with family. Uh, okay, so um, thank you for sharing that. Whether you just shared in your own head and kind of went through that process or that if you shared with the group, I do appreciate you taking that time to um, share. So we're going to um, move on to the next slide. 
All right. And we talked about, you know, things we can and cannot control. And on the outside blue area of the slide, you see the things you can't control. So we're going to let them go, right? So you can't control other people's decisions or how they react or um, they're going to wear a mask or not, um, how long this will last. The amount of toilet paper at the store, we can't control those things. But so we want to be focusing on what we can control. Okay, so if we look in the inner box, in the inner circle here, things that we can control, we can focus on that. My attitude, you know, is positive, my kindness and empathy to others, how I'll follow CDC direction, so on and so forth. So whether for yourself or you try to help somebody else get in this right mindset, we're off to a great start here today with our coping strategy number one. All right, number two, facilitate social connectedness. All right, and this is a exercise we're going to go through to help others to get and stay connected. Okay. So we're going to work to overcome physical distancing with social engagement. You know how we're going to do that? So before we start, I want to talk a little bit about loneliness. So something, a quote that I want to share with you, because loneliness is um, a huge issue. And it's um, something that was actually, before the pandemic, was recognized as a, as a health epidemic. Um, Britain actually appointed a minister of loneliness. So it, it kind of really speaks to how important this topic is. So think about now, we're in the middle of this pandemic, and I want to share this quote for you. An interesting thing about loneliness, it doesn't matter how many people around you what matters is how you feel about the quality of the relationships. Is it valued, reciprocal, are there gifts shared? Okay. So the effects in um, overall well-being uh, of overall being can be decreased when somebody's experiencing loneliness. Um, immunity it can be decreased as well, and stress hormones can be increased. Um, sleep difficulties, you know, so on and so forth that people may experience. So what I like to point out here is that. For persons with any type of diverse ability or disability, they experience loneliness and isolation much more than um, typical fears. So what we want to think about here is that um, for somebody with a disability, like, who would be more likely to experience isolation and loneliness, think about their social network. Typically, it's, um, you know, perhaps paid staff where they live, perhaps it's family members. Perhaps it's somebody who comes in and helps them aids or somebody who's paid to come in and, you know, um, provide, um, you know, either social or interactive activities with them. So, um, or other people with disabilities. So that's generally, I think the statistics are um, somewhere around 92% of the connections that a person will have with a disability fall into that category. So they're much more higher risk of not really experiencing that true, authentic, valued, reciprocal relationship. So we want to think about that. And that's what this exercise is about, how we can help to facilitate social connectedness. All right. Let's be part of the solution. How are we going to do it? This exploration exercise to discover and use a person's gifts to make social connections. So let's get started. Step A. We're going to explore someone's gifts and passions. So I want you to think about someone who you believe needs some help with social connectedness. Um, could be a family member, a neighbor, friend, whatnot. Um, so think about that person. Here's the question I'd like to pose to you. Think about someone who may need help in making social connections. Again, your child, a neighbor, a family member. What is lovely about this person, right? How do they light people up? What are their gifts? So gifts meaning what do they bring to the world? What is something that they're interested in, passionate about, whatnot? So we want to think about that. I'm going to share my example of who I'm thinking about, and I'd like you to share in the question box um, <clears throat> who you're thinking about. All right, so I'm, I'm thinking about this young man who lives in the community, and um, he is really interested in music. He can learn music um, so quickly, a new song, um, loves learning the lyrics and how to play, you know, guitar along with it, and loves to share that talent or that gift with others. So that's who I'm thinking about. I'd like to ask you, 
who are you thinking about, all right? And who is it that um, you believe could use some help with making a social connection? What are their gifts? So I want you to go ahead and um, share in the chat box, all right, what we came up with. Who are you thinking of? And Caroline, do you have any responses? Uh, yep, we have one. I'm thinking of my sister who struggles with relationships and is now at home alone with herself and her work. Might need help connecting. Um, someone, I'm thinking of someone who's extremely creative and artistic. And someone who is interested in fitness and enjoys taking yoga classes. Good. For the sister, um, the, the first one that came up, I just wanted to ask if you're, if you're willing to share, um, what is it that, um, what makes her lovely? What are the gifts that she um, could share with the world around her? What are her talents? What are her passions? She is very empathetic. Empathetic, great. Okay. Get another one All right. Come up. Someone's yep. thinking of their son. He loves art and drawing. He's very smart and inquisitive and creative. Okay, so art and drawing. Okay, so we want to be thinking about like that empathy, the art, the drawing. What is it, you know, that they can give to somebody else? So we got that. We have somebody with fitness and art. So we're off to a great start. I'm going to go on to the next slide unless there is anything else that came in. That's it for now. All right, step B. So we need to start thinking about sharing these gifts to create a connection. So who in your community needs these gifts? And in my example, I'm going to share, right? I want to be thinking about making that connection based on the common interests, right? That's what ideally what we want to get to. What is the common interest that somebody shares? And then trying to make that connection based on that. So in my situation, I'm the young man who likes music. I know that there's somebody at um, church that is also really musically inclined, loves um, writing music and being involved in learning new songs, sharing that with other people. So that's who I'm thinking that this person would be a good person to connect with, right? And they're being connected because of that similar interest, right? So we want to think about that. Um, so let's go ahead and share in the chat box if you thought about who you were um, thinking of that and what their gifts are, who would be a good person for them to share with, whether it's like an actually identified person or somebody that you might think about trying to connect them with. All right. And then, um, Caroline, if you have any responses. Uh, yeah, we have a grandparent or friend who has been laid off and who also has an interest in art. Great, great. So you can think about connecting somebody with the artistic um, ability with somebody who loves art. Um, anybody else? Uh, yeah, someone who used to go to their gym and is also missing their fitness routine. Okay, great. All right, fantastic. All right, so you start, I'm seeing like connections starting to be made, right? You have somebody who is um, artistically talented and wants to share that with perhaps somebody who's laid off and also as an artist and you have somebody, um, you know, from that enjoyed fitness activities and connecting with somebody else who's also with their routine. <clears throat> Great. All right, and unless we have something else, I'm going to go on to the next part. That's it for now. Step C, connection, connecting on a common interest. So here's where the um, work comes to help connect these two people. How are these two going to be connected by the common interest or their gifts, right? What they are interested in. So what we want to be thinking about here is um, it may be a little bit more challenging in these times, but we can be very creative on how those connections can be made. So I'm thinking about the person I know and then the person at their church, how they're going to be connected. I may um, help to connect them or suggest that they can connect it online and um, create a song together and or perhaps put it up on YouTube. 
or they can, um, you know, start some kind of group on Facebook where they're, you know, interested in older music, something of that nature. So you start to create something where they are going to work together on, on that. Um, another way that we could still following, you know, being physically distanced is, you know, perhaps they can share their music out with the public, but in a way that is safe, right? They're just distanced and, you know, um, maybe one has a porch and they can sit out there um, in, you know, still following guidelines and be able to share their music together. So we're looking to make that connection. So let me ask you, um, so if somebody shared an idea there, if there was anything shared, um, how are you going to connect these two people, right? What will be that mode that'll happen right now for them to be connected? And I welcome you to add that into the chat box or the question area if you'd like. All right. And Caroline, what do we what do we have for some responses there? Yep, we have um, asking this person to draw or paint, make a card, and send it to someone. Okay. Okay, great. Perfect way. Perfect. So start making a connection, maybe back and forth with, you know, a drawing or painting and then encouraging, I'd like to see some of your drawings and then maybe there can be a connection going back and forth. Right. Um, and um, to virtually explore a museum together. Oh, perfect idea. All right. Two people like art, they can do that virtually and maybe they can't go to a museum right now but they could go to um, perhaps um, explore something virtually. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Ask this person if they want to sign up to take a virtual yoga or fitness class together. Okay, perfect. So if you, um, you know, have the person who likes yoga or fitness and then they are aware of somebody that they used to know from, say, like, you know, the Y that um, they could reach out to them and say, hey, there's a virtual class coming up and can we do it together? All right, fantastic. So those are some great ideas on how we can make those social connections. So do you see they need to be based on um, common interests and then trying to help connect one person to another. And once that connection is made, um, what we see is that the benefits will last past this crisis, right? So you're, you're creating a, a, a like building blocks on the bottom to start a relationship or a friendship based on these common interests, okay? Um, and then hoping that that then turns into relationships or where somebody is valued for what they bring to the table, right? So what are their gifts and that those gifts are being valued. All right, fantastic. So we're on to number three. Now we're going to cruise through the rest of these. Flexible and creative thinking. We need to have flexible and creative thinking um, during this time now more than ever. So we want to be thinking outside the box. This is the way we've always done it. There are like eight worst words in the history of the world. It doesn't allow for flexibility. It is not going to allow for optimal success, particularly with persons with diverse abilities and um, with anybody during this time. We have to be very flexible and be thinking about how we navigate the situation. This is also an opportunity to explore and find new interests, right? This could perhaps be... Um, Someone who uh, you're thinking about, somebody who always loved visiting movies, let's say, for instance, and get a lot of time on our hands, perhaps. And maybe this is the time to explore other interests or look at another genre of movies or to, um, you know, look at other areas other than watching movies and start gardening or whatnot. So it's a great time to start really kind of pushing that envelope and finding out what somebody else might be interested in. Let's get creative and share ideas on how we can be positive and build community during the crisis. Okay, so I have some examples here um, about community building in a positive way during this crisis. And I want you to be thinking about what creative ways you have that you have, you know, helped to build community during the situation that you could share with others. Perhaps we organize a porch night. You leave positive notes in common areas of your apartment complex. Um, you talk to family members you've been out of touch with. Interview somebody and ask about memory. Some of the examples from before, you know, perhaps someone who was feeling a little depressed or isolated. Um, you know, maybe either interview them or help them to interview. Who would you like to talk to? Let's do an interview and write a story about somebody, right? Just ways to help um, make social connections. Watch 
movies or read books to learn about disability culture, right? That's really important. There are a lot of great movies out there, or books to be read. I think the more that we can um, help to understand where others come from, the more empathetic and, you know, perhaps problem solving and creative we can be to help everyone feel like they belong in a valued part of our community. Try a new recipe and post it about it online. So if perhaps you're thinking someone that you're thinking of likes to cook, that could be a way that we can help them to socially connect. Ask how others are connecting online or join their group, right? Particularly this one might be helpful. Like if your team is, you know, the team at home is really isolating, maybe you do kind of, you know, cross that line a little bit and ask another parent, what are, your, what are, the, what are the other teams doing? And maybe find a way to, you know, help to initiate that um, that connection to help somebody to um, feel part of a group or feel valued. All right, plant and give flowers for a friend. And if anybody's coming up with any other ones, we welcome you to share them. There's a couple other ones here. Build a story together, one sentence at a time, um, and some other ones. And send and thank you letters. We're all like writing more than ever before. Organize a birthday parade of cards for someone that's been done quite a lot. Um, so what else do we have that came up for suggestions? Caroline, anything? Yep. Um, we coordinated a run for anyone in the neighborhood. It was called Social Distance Running, a uh, Marathon. Nice. <laughs> That's great. Nice. Um, make a photo yeah. album for a family member. Mm -hmm. Having a virtual talent show. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Uh, yeah. Reaching well, out to local nursing homes or group homes and offering to lead virtual craft classes. Great. Well, that's a that, great example there. So, again, let's just try to find ways that we can help yourself or somebody else that you know or somebody in the community to be socially connected. Really important. All right, and let's get on to the next one. Tip number four. And here's some general communication tips. Again, um, I work with the general public, and sometimes I have a variety of people who are on these calls. Sometimes these tips are new and um, maybe not ever been explored. For some of you, it may be things that you are, you know, quite comfortable with and, and understand the practices behind them. Um, and if you do, then maybe we think about how to share this with somebody else who could benefit from learning about these tips. So when giving directions, we want to um, remember these tips, a uh, few words as possible, calm demeanor, using a low voice and watching your body language and allow for processing time. All right, and then specific to the Duchenne um, community here, tips for talking about Duchenne must be logistically. Words like normal, fulfilled, and productive should be used carefully in the sentence. Um, it does not imply that those affected with Duchenne aren't normal or fulfilled or productive. So we want to be um, you know, mindful of that. And then um, do's and don'ts, suggested terms and persons first language. So here's some suggestions to share with the group. So in, we want to say this. We want to use first, person first language, which means that we are focused on the um, person first, and then the, uh, the description would come afterwards. So um, here are some suggestions. We would say person with the disability or the disability um, rather than the handicapped or disabled. Or um, an example is she has autism or diagnosis of rather than she's autistic. Um, there are examples, and I'd like to point this out. Sometimes there are um, communities that prefer identity first. It's more rare, but um, in general, when I'm teaching people, I want to give the respect of using person first language. And then if somebody does suggest or would prefer identity first, um, for instance, somebody may say, I want to be called autistic, then we would respect that as well. Um, affected by instead of afflicted with. Children without disabilities as opposed to normal or healthy kids, because basically normal is a setting on the dryer, right? So who's normal, right? So that's um, a suggestion. Person who uses a wheelchair as a opposed to confined to or wheelchair bound, because for many of you can understand that a wheelchair is actually freeing. It gives somebody their freedom and their liberty. Diagnosed with as opposed to suffers from, and then um, we use the term progressive muscular disorder as opposed to crippled or debilitating disease. And then finally, a disorder, a genetic condition, rather than a disease or viral. 
All right, so there's some, um, you know, suggested terms and tips. And my number five strategy is develop together a visual schedule. And this is a great suggestion for all, especially during these times. And especially if you're in a situation, perhaps you are a parent and you um, have been homeschooling and hopefully school's wrapping up now and then summer's coming, so we're into a whole new different um, realm and what are we going to be doing? And um, summer has a whole different schedule to it. So um, what is a visual schedule? written words and or icons that spell out what's coming next. You cross off the activities when done. Um, the, tip, the tip with using the visual schedule, you want to keep it age appropriate. We have different examples here. You may be able to see some have an icon and it just like comes off um, with, you know, perhaps it's magnetic or it's Velcro and you take it off as you go through the day, right? You take it off and you just put it in a little basket or whatnot and then put up the next day as the next day. Um, you can use sticky notes or it can be handwritten. Um, you can be creative in what works for your setting. Being able to see the sequence of events helps someone to feel comfortable and in control of their day, right? And it really helps with structure right now, and I think structure is really hard because most um, most of us are not able to do that now, you know, when, especially with summer coming, we might need a little bit more structure. It's a great tool to process change. Um, and uh, here I made an example of what you may be experiencing um, in, the, in the shame of your disability community. So um, take medications, wear a AFOs or use a cough assist machine, maybe take a virtual class, physical therapy, play a video game, read. So just some suggestions and you would create that in whatever works for you. So um, for instance, on this one, say physical therapy was supposed to come after your class, but um, they canceled and there's a change. So it helps you process that change. You would just take it off, cross it off and put it on the next day. So it's a great um, tool for that. And maintain consistency with the schedule as much as possible. Structure, office safety, and predictability. Number six, set clear expectations. Clear expectations are the rules, right? We use rules, but we use the word expectations um, because it's more positive and shows what we want to see. Um, they're created and reviewed with the group or your family or whatever your situation is at the start of each day, allowing for processing time, have them repeat back. So for an example, here's one. And this one is created for, um, say, uh, I just made it up for a, a family that's home and homeschooling, right? Made it up like a month or two ago. So um, what might be on this expectation list is that you're up and ready, you know, dressed up by 8 a.m. to school, whatever it may be device-free zone for during learning time. That could be an expectation. So whatever it is that in your setting or situation or group or family that needs to be um, you know, expressed as here are the expectations, that's what you would put on there. So again, we want to use words or icons, pictures. You want to keep it age appropriate. Um, generally on five, you don't want to have a list of 20. Um, and you don't want just one or two that are too broad that it's just hard to get a concept around that. And they're always framed in the positive, what you'd like to see, as opposed to don't do this, stop doing this, you're not supposed to do this. We want to say what we'd like to see. And then knowing what the expectations are in this new normal um, will help someone to process the change and manage the situation safely. Here's an example of what might work in your family. Um, cooperate while taking this. That could be an expectation. It could be attentive participation in virtual learning. Maybe that's an expectation that's important in your setting and your family. All right, so we're going to move on to cooking strategy number seven, self-care for you and others. And this is that, the part of the webinar where I'm saying this is really about you, right? So um, whoever's on this call, put night oxygen mask on first before you're helping others. So what are we doing to help um, with self-care for you and others? Go on an attention diet. We are being bombarded with really horrible news and, um, you know, just dire situations around us. It can be very overwhelming. It can also be very tempting to, you know, always going to be checking what's going on. Or there's just so much that it can be extremely overwhelming. So what I want to suggest is you go on an attention diet. Maybe you pick two to three reliable news sources and only two to three times a day, right, that you're checking in. Try to give it a break the rest of the time. Right. Practice gratitude daily. So we're going to have an opportunity to actually do this um, in a bit. 
Name three things that he is grateful for daily. Right, and they have to be um, no repeat. So whatever you pick today, you can't pick tomorrow. You have to pick three new things. Exercise. So whenever possible, movement and exercise, it's going to bolster your physical and mental health. I'll get some time in there for that. And then music. What a wonderful tool music is. So create a soothing or nostalgic playlist. Take a little time for yourself. Put in your favorite, you know, put in your earbuds if you want. Maybe go for a walk. You get two on that um, list. I've done it once. But really, let's use music to help us cope through during this time. Great. So coping strategy number eight. We want to be thinking like a team. So um, you're not in this alone. And if you are at home, if you're caring for someone, or you have, you know, a stressful situation at home, I want to put a suggestion out there for you to ask for help when you need it, right? And um, if you know, I don't know, you know, for example, the Jet Foundation. You know, reach out to somebody. I know that they'll help you and in some way give put you in the right direction or whoever, what other organizations or help that you have, family or friends. Um, don't be afraid to help. Ask for help when you need it. If able to help out a family member or a neighbor or friend, the rest of it would be appreciated. All right, so I'm, I gave an example. I did one of these a couple months ago, and someone said that their um, co-worker has an autoimmune disease, not able to go outside. But she had a dog that um, needed to go out every day. So this person was going over to her colleague's house and taking the dog out for a walk. So little things like that can really help out. If you're able to help out, um, I know someone would really appreciate it. And there's great resources coming out each day, so seek them out. All right, number nine, coping strategies. Use positive language. It's a great tip for us all. So when we're giving direction or instruction or just helping somebody navigate through their day, we want to be focusing on what we'd like to see or occur rather than pointing out the bad. So quite simply, it's saying, you know, instead of saying, stop running, please walk, right? To change our language a little bit. Um, what are we looking for? What would we like to see? Your role modeling for others' positive problem-solving techniques as well. Um, and when you do use the positive language, you'll see in your body language changing a little bit too. Because if you're using the language and getting upset about what is occurring that shouldn't be, rather than spelling out what should be done, you know, like let's get ready or dressed and you know ready for the day, as opposed to stop playing. Like I told you to get off the video game, but just you're already in like kind of a, a mode that would set up for yourself to feel anxious or, or perhaps, right? So um, if we want to focus on what we'd like to see. Pay attention to your own self-talk as well. Um, you know, perhaps maybe something like, this is never going to end. I'm tired of this. Instead, if negative in nature, consider switching the dialogue. Here's a little bit of homework for you. All right, so as you go through the rest of the day, I want us to think about focusing on the positive. Use a higher ratio of praise to correction. So think about that. How often are we correcting somebody as opposed to praising them when they are doing something correctly, right? So if it's your child, you know, we're constantly like, you know, you didn't do that. Stop doing this, whatnot. Um, I totally didn't do the dishwasher. Instead, when we see something, you know, being done well, like, oh, thanks for putting your shoes away. You're pointing out that good, good expected kind of behavior or, or task. All right, so um, that's your homework. Let's see how often how you do for the rest of the day. All right, and number 10, finally, get out. And get outside, that is, as much as possible. Go outside. There are healing properties in nature. Um, and the web is beautiful. At least it is here in Massachusetts today. Um, and it's getting much better. It was cold a couple months ago when we started this webinar. But, um, you know, whenever, get out. Exercise will help you bolster your physical and your mental health. Have fun. Make up a scavenger hunt or take pictures and post them online. Um, something that I've been doing or I heard someone else doing as well is that if I go, I'm trying out new parks and places to go for walks and taking photos and posting them. And um, I know a friend who wasn't able to go out at the time, but I said, you know, hey, I found this new place and when this is all over, you and I are going to go there, right? It's got a beautiful, um, you know, very accessible walking area, there's picnic tables, we can go there soon, right? So, um, Make it a little bit of fun, get going outside. And so that wraps up our 10 strategies. Thank you for following you know, me along with that and participating in the chat there. Now we have some areas we're going to go through an attitude of gratitude and positivity. And this is the question I'd like to um, propose to you. 
During this first isolation and physical distancing, what have you recognized you were grateful for or appreciative of? So I'd like to take a moment and um, ask you to add into that question box, what are you grateful for? What are you appreciative of? All right. So um, I'm going to share while you're getting ready and thinking about that, and um, you can go ahead and put it in the chat box. And during this first isolation, I'm very grateful for, <laughs> Carol's going to laugh, she's already going to laugh at this one. Um, I have my hair color comes automatically in the mail every month. It's delivered. So that's kind of like a godsend of doing this time. It just really happy when it comes in the, in the mail and I didn't have to worry about it or whatnot. So um, that's what I'm grateful for. I'm also on a bit more serious note, very grateful all my family is healthy and um, I can't ask for more, right? That's um, what I'm grateful for. So I would like to ask you to share what are you grateful for and go ahead and ask um, add those into the um, Question box, the chat box. All right, what are you grateful for? And then Caroline, what do you have? We have, I'm thankful for good general health for our family and that we've had a very peaceful and calm household during quarantine. Nice, nice. Ability, awesome. Yeah, ability to work safely from home during this time. Great. Um, mm -hmm. Thankful for a good dog and good trails to walk with him. Love that. Um, thankful for my home and for food. Absolutely. Anything else, Caroline? Thankful for still having a job or a paycheck right now. Yeah, yeah, that's important. Okay, great. Well, whether you share it on the uh, question box publicly or not, or just did it, you know, internally to yourself, thanks for sharing that. And I hope that, hopefully that felt good and put us in a really good mindset. Um, so then finally, we're going to wrap up here with our last segment, whoops, go back one, um, of the webinars, uh, Attitude of Gratitude and Positivity is this question, lean in and learn from the shelter in place. What will be better when we come out through the other side? So I want you to think about that and you can go ahead and put that in the question box. And I am going to share with you what I'm great, what I think is going to be better for when we come out the other side. So I have um, always visited local parks, trails, um, you know, gone for bike rides, running, hiking, whatnot. Always enjoyed that. And what I've been seeing a lot lately, which I think is fabulous, a lot more people out and, and using those um, trails and parks, um, you know, safely, of course. And it's so nice to see, and I can tell a lot of people are new at it because they're kind of looking at the map, they're not sure where they're going, and it's nice to be able to, you know, give them a little verbal direction and help them along. I hope when this is all over that we really value and appreciate the beauty around us. And if you have trails and parks or areas that you can go and enjoy, that we'll continue to do that. So that's what I am really um, happy to see has been uh, different during this time, and I hope it can continue. So I invite you to write in that question box, what do you think is going to be better when we come out of this on the other side? We have, and then, yep. what do you got? Uh, more eye contact and smiles. Um, I think we will we will appreciate our time with our family and friends more and not take for granted all of the fun, everyday things we can do. Dining out, walking in the park, movies, beach, definitely. Appreciate those so much more, right? Wonderful. Seeing smiles, with, yeah, seeing smiles with no mask on. <laughs> More I know that it's nice when we can kind of, it's weird yeah. with the mask on, we can't uh, see those smiles, so fantastic. And then just more virtual opportunities for those who may experience isolation all the time, not just during the pandemic. <laughs> Absolutely, more virtual, absolutely very, very important, um, those opportunities. And that's just such a nice way to wrap up, unless we have anything else, Caroline. Uh, just more sensitivity to people's variable work styles. Really good point, really. Like just understanding, you know, where everybody else is coming from, work style or whatnot. Um, so thank you for sharing those. They're really, really important. And I want to um, kind of end by allowing some time for Q&A. We do have a couple minutes left. Let's see what we have. We have, yeah, we have 
just right on time. So we have a chance for Q&A, but before, while you're thinking of your questions and throwing them in the chat box, um, I'm gonna skip to the next slide and share with you again. You know, my name's Lisa Drennan. I'm the founder of Merge Diversibilities Inclusion Consulting, but I want to share a little bit else about who, because this is the Jeff Foundation, um, about myself and that you may find interesting. Um, I have known about and been a, you know, just a um, kind of a supporter of the Jeff Foundation from when it started. I happen to know Jeff's family. Um, both of my children and um, participated in their cross country jet ride. And I was also an adult uh, chaperone for both of theirs for segments of it, not the whole thing. Um, and I have an incredible um, respect for, and just, um, I, I'm just very passionate about understanding you know, our families um, in the DMV community and wanting to help support you. So it was just quite an honor to be able to share this webinar with you um, and of I, I, most of the times that I the other day I was up for a bike ride and I was thinking about the jet ride years ago and I, I did a segment in Kansas and it was really um, you know it's fascinating to meet all the families that we did along the way but knowing we were doing it for a cause and it was um, just a, a wonderful experience it was really um, you know one of the, the highlights of my life to be able to participate in that fantastic so I do have that commitment as well on the side but you know in my role and in my job I do like to share again I work with recreation sport camp organizations that are for the general population any community organization so that could be a YMCA town rec program could be a church library um, really anything any any community offering that's out there I work and I go in and I provide trainings and consultations and helping them to be more um, inclusive in their practices of persons with diverse abilities so I offer customized staff trainings both in webinar online and then on site as well when this all um, opens up again and I'm also um, running the role of a keynote panelist or event speaker. So um, on the topics of community inclusion. So if and you know of any connections that um, may want to know about the work that I do, I'd be happy to be connected with them. And then here's how um, you can stay in touch with me. And I invite you all to please stay in touch. I welcome you to join my monthly newsletter. And um, uh, you can get to that by my website, mergeconsulting.org. And you'll see a little box down the bottom about signing up for my monthly newsletter. Um, please connect with me on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, if you were on any of those. Um, there are my handles right there. And I welcome you to... Uh, ask any further questions um, by email or giving me a call and there's all my contact info there so um, what with a few minutes left I did want to ask did anybody have any additional questions and I will stay on afterwards if you'd rather talk to me one-to-one -one, I'm happy to do that as well so we'll stay on um, after so Caroline were there any other questions no questions yet, just thanking you for being here and for all this great information. Wonderful, great, fantastic. Well, it was a pleasure and an honor to spend um, either your morning or afternoon, depending on where you're coming from, um, an hour with you. And uh, please stay in touch and best of luck w with everything and um, best wishes for you and your family members in health and uh, well-being during this crisis. So thank you for being here. Lisa and Caroline, thank you so much for this great presentation and for taking the time to join us today. Um, like Lisa said, if you do have any more questions, please feel free to email her or email Jet Foundation. We'd be happy to connect you that way as well. This presentation will also be recorded, um, so we will be sharing it on our website for anyone who would like to rewatch or go back to another part in her presentation or to simply just share with someone else who may benefit from this great um, information and all these fabulous strategies. So Lisa, thank you so much. We really appreciate it and we're always grateful for your support throughout the year. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, so I don't see any additional questions. So like we said, please feel free to email Lisa or us. Um, but with that said, we hope um, everybody has a great weekend and thank you so much for joining us. Great, thank you.